Mackenzie Johnston with Tri-State Livestock News, bringing you discussions concerning fair cattle markets. Today we have the opportunity to chat with Fred Wacker of Mile City, Montana. Fred is the president of the Montana Stock Growers Association. Can you tell me a little bit about your background and your involvement within the cattle industry? Well, I'm a third generation rancher from Montana. I uh, broke off of uh, my family uh, as a operation I grew up on, and then I went to Mile City, Ogalia, a lot of 45 years ago, and uh, my wife and I started uh, Crossfall Ranch, and, and uh, we run cows and calves and yearlings, and we feed cattle, fat cattle, and uh, it's grown up uh, to pretty good size for us, and, and uh, so I'm pretty deeply involved in all, in all phases of it, and I'm also president of the Montana Stock Road Association. What do you feel are the major issues standing in the way of fair cattle markets today? The most important thing, if not the most important thing, is the uh, packers that we have so few. And we have so few uh, numbers uh, that we can process anymore. And the number of cattle that we have, uh, you are in a buyer's market. I, I think that uh, the, uh, if you just look at the stock prices of, of those processing companies that are on the New York Stock Exchange, you'll find that their uh, stock is doing very well. And I think that uh, their profits, when you take a look at the cut value uh, and, the, and their, their box beef prices, they're making a, a really good profit. Number one, I want to clarify and say something is that I want the packers to make good money because without them, what are we going to do with all these cattle? Somebody, somebody has to process them. And, but I think there's some unreasonable profit that we've got to take a look at. And I think uh, the packers and stockyards out run by the United States Department of Agriculture. I think they need to take a hard look into, into how these few packers, the big four, how they have such a stranglehold over the feeding industry. So I think it's really important that uh, we uh, keep a very close eye on, uh, on what's going on within the entire cattle industry. So what are your thoughts on the DOJ investigation into the big four beef packers? I think it needs done. I think it's long overdue. I think you need to take a look at it, not only on on uh, all of the items, the collusion and, and other things. We need to take a really strong look, as I mentioned, under the Packers and Stockers Act, which is was put in place uh, only 100 years ago to guarantee fairness in these markets. So that's a that's a very important issue. But I think maybe one of the main things is is that that in the uh, in all of this time where we're down from. 20 packers that bought cattle nationwide pretty strong and they quit and they, 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 they were bought up and on and on. We're down to four majors. I think the, I think the Packers and Stockyards Act needs to take a hard look at how we uh, we market fat cattle today. We may find that it's very fair, but I don't think it hasn't been looked at in probably 60 or 70 years. I think we need to take a, hard, a really hard look at it and make sure that everybody's getting treated fairly. There's been a lot of talk about increasing competition within our cattle markets. With that being said, what are your thoughts on Senator Grassley's 5014 legislation? Well, I think it actually takes competition away. I'm, I'm not in favor of it. I think uh, the worst thing we can do is take uh, we can take away from the cattle industry an individual producer's ability to market his cattle on a plan that fits him. And when you say that 50% has to be bid on the open market, and a guy's got the cattle, and I and a, a packer down the road says, well, you know, I would bid you so much, and the guy looks and he says, I'm going to make some money doing that. I'm very happy with that. I don't want any law to stand in the way from him marketing cattle the way that he feels is best for him. Earlier this spring, President Trump made the comment that he would like to terminate trade deals where we import cattle. What are your thoughts on imports of cattle and beef? Well, I think, uh, I don't think uh, that we can do that. I think America has a love affair with hamburger, and we do not have enough hamburger, and mostly what we import from out of this country is, is the grind, which is made into hamburger, and it comes in chunks. I think what, he, what he's, I hope he's referring to is countries that have disease. We should not be importing live cattle out we got to really watch the health safety of the herd. I think that's a very, very important issue. I also think that we do not need to come 
from Brazil with cattle or with meat where they have known the worst disease ever, the foot and mouth. Because I'll tell you, that is something when it gets started, spreads like wildfire. I remember watching on television when England had it, they ended up having to destroy cattle, put them in piles and then to burn them. More than ever, consumers want to know where their food comes from and basically where everything comes from that they purchase. What are your thoughts on mandatory country of origin labeling? I don't see any good reason why we couldn't have a sensible labeling of our beef. I'm in favor of it. I think that we need to do. It was poorly written before, and the World Trade Courts uh, struck it down four times, told us not to come back. We're in the mode to start fighting us a billion dollars because we were violating the uh, NAFTA treaty. So I think that we need to be careful. We have a resolution in the Montana Stock Wars that we support a sensible country of origin labeling of our, of our products. And I think uh, it has to be legal and it has to be, it has to be in place by the Congress of the United States. And then I think we can have a really good labeling program. The USDA has come out and said that they would like to implement RFID tags across the industry by 2023. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I've used them for 15 years in the natural business. I'm a natural guy with uh, 10,000 head of cattle. And I have no problem with them. You do lose a few. You got to know. You have to learn how to put them in properly. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, we live in, a, in, a, in a, an age of information. And I think uh, that if we have another mad cow, if we have some, uh, we do pray uh, never a foot and mouth disease candidate. We need to know where it is, where it came from, and how we stop it quickly. It is to the advantage. Of the, of the producers to have a RFD tag because it's also a marketing tool because now we can use that and they can take a look at that tag and say this is an animal from Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming or wherever it's from and it was fed in Nebraska or Kansas or someplace and, and they know the entire history of that state, of that hamburger, of that brisket. I think it's very critical that we get on board and we let our our consumers know where our product is from and how it has been treated and how it has been handled. We have seen vertical integration in both the pork and uh, poultry industries. Do you think the cattle industry is in danger of going down the same path? I don't think so. We're awfully independent bunch of people. I don't see any danger. I see good times ahead for the beef industry because... It's been a long time since we've had a doctor on TV talking about the inferior of what beef does to your bloodstreams and and how you shouldn't eat beef and you shouldn't eat um, uh, red meat. I think we've we've answered those questions. We've answered them very, very well. And I think that whether it's vertical integration, whether it's a health issue, I think the beef industry is on track to have some really, really good times because we have improved our product. Used to be people would buy a steak, and if they'd say, you my steak is tough, we kind of had the attitude, well, it's just the way you shut up and eat it. Well, that's not the way to, to retain a customer. We, we've jumped the, the choice and the prime over double of what it was 20 years ago. And that makes it a tasty and a juicy and a way better product. There is currently a petition circulating to, uh, to bring about a beef checkoff referendum. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, I think the beef checkoff is fabulous. I don't think I know about that. I oppose it. I think it's senseless. I think the, when you can't and don't advertise your product, you're going to be ultimately the biggest loser that there is. Just imagine when you turn, when you pick up a newspaper or you listen to a radio or you look at Facebook and you see all of the different products being advertised and selling in billions and billions of dollars. Why would we want to stop doing that for beef? What are some of the main concerns you're hearing from your membership regarding the cattle markets and this tough time they've come through essentially over the past few months? Well, everything is so expensive for you to do, and they're all pleased that the markets have bounced back to where where it is. Mm -hmm. But they are very concerned going forward that uh, there's going to be not enough profit in the uh, cattle business. And I think uh, what it's really brought about is more and more programmed cattle 
program cattle are selling for 15 to 20 cents a pound more than, than uh, commodity cattle. And a lot of people are wondering, how do I get on that bandwagon? And they're wanting to learn and they're wanting to, to do things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where this industry is going. Do you have any closing statements you would like to make regarding uh, our cattle industry and the cattle markets? We, we need to really get behind our product. And we need to advertise it and we need to support it and we need to defend it. Because we are the king of the meat industry people when they go out they go to a steakhouse there's no there's not many chicken houses i know of no pork houses and i think we've we've really got this thing going for us and we got to support it and we got to get behind it and whether we're producers whether we're processors or whether we are grocery stores we need to understand that uh, we've got a great great product here